Hip dysplasia in dogs is a condition where there has been an abnormal formation of the hip socket, and this can cause lameness or arthritis of the joints. Larger breeds are more prone to this condition, although medium and smaller breeds can also be affected. It is widely believed to be a genetic trait that is affected by environmental factors. During growth, both the head of the femur and the socket in the pelvis must grow at equal rates. In hip dysplasia, this uniform growth doesn't occur during puppyhood. This results in laxity of the joint and is followed by degenerative joint disease. Normal hip anatomy. In the normal anatomy of the hip joint, the almost spherical end of the femur head fits into the, the concave socket located in the pelvis. The bony surfaces of the femur head and the socket are covered by cartilage. While bones provide the strength necessary to support body weight, cartilage ensures a smooth fit and a wide range of motion. Normal hip function can be affected by congenital conditions such as dysplasia, trauma, and by acquired diseases such as osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. The hip could have major contractions from dysplasia. The femur head is not deeply and tightly held by the socket. Instead of being a snug fit, it is a partial fit. Secondly, the femur head or socket are not smooth and round, but are misshapen, causing abnormal wear and tear or friction within the joint as it moves. The joint is continually repairing itself and laying down new cartilage. However, this is a slow process, so the joint may suffer degradation due to abnormal wear and tear, or may not support the body weight as intended. The joint becomes inflamed and a cycle of cartilage damage, inflammation and pain commences. The inflammation also causes further damage. The bones of the joint may also develop osteoarthritis, which is a degenerative disease, marked by the breakdown of cartilage between joints, resulting in painful bone-to-bone -bone contact. The deformity of the joint may get worse over time, or may remain the same. A dog may have good radiographs and yet be in pain, or may have very poor radiographs and have no apparent pain issues. Large and giant breeds are most susceptible to hip dysplasia. To reduce pain, the animal will typically reduce its movement of that hip which may be visible as bunny hopping, where both legs move together or stiffness. The causes of hip dysplasia are considered heritable, but new research conclusively suggests that environment also plays a role. Neutering a dog, especially before the dog has reached an age of full developmental maturity, has been shown to almost double the chance of the development of hip dysplasia. Other environmental influences include overfeeding which causes dogs to become overweight, injury or ligament tear at a young age, or repetitive motion on the forming joint, for instance, overexercising a puppy under the age of a year. It is most common in medium to large breed purebred dogs, such as German Shepherds, Rottweilers and Mastiffs, but also occurs in some smaller breeds such as Spaniels and Pugs. What are the signs that your dog may have hip dysplasia? Decreased activity. Decreased motion. Difficulty or reluctance to rise, jump, run or climb stairs. Lameness in the hind end. Looseness in the joint. Swaying or bunny hopping. Loss of thigh muscle mass. Noticeable enlargement of the shoulder muscles as they compensate for the hind end. Pain. Stiffness or soreness after rising from rest. Affected dogs can show clinical signs as early as 7 months of age, but most do not until 1 to 2 years of age. In part, this is because the underlying hip problem may be mild or severe, worsening or stable and the body may be more or less able to keep the joint in repair well enough to cope. Hip dysplasia is diagnosed with radiographs of the pelvis. Radiographs can be sent to the Orthopedic Foundation for Animals for grading and certification. 
This system rates a dog's hip joint on a seven-point scoring system. The test relies on interpretation of a radiograph of the dog's hips, which are then assigned a score by three independent radiologists. Treatment. There is no complete cure, although there are many options to alleviate the clinical signs. The aim of treatment is to enhance quality of life. Most dogs with hip dysplasia do not need surgery, as they do very well with a home physical therapy program, keeping trim and strong, and using pain medication as needed. If the problem cannot be controlled with medications, then surgery is considered. There are traditionally two types of surgery. In the first type of surgery the joint is reshaped to reduce pain or help movement. The second type of surgery is a hip replacement, which completely replaces the damaged hip with an artificial joint similar to human hip replacements. Non-surgical intervention is dependent on many factors including age, weight, degree of hip laxity, lifestyle of the owner, and their tolerance for the cost incurred for medication and physical therapy. Weight control is often the single most important thing that we can do to help a dog with arthritis. Reasonable exercise stimulates cartilage growth and reduces degeneration, and also regular walks taken in the early stages of dysplasia can help prevent loss of muscle mass to the hips. Exercise also improves joint range of motion, which in turn keeps the dog more comfortable. Swimming, because it is a non-weight bearing exercise, can be a very useful means of maintaining muscle tone and range of motion without placing concussive forces on the joint. Medication can reduce pain and discomfort and also reduce damaging inflammation. Incorporating omega-3 fatty acids into the diet can result in improved symptoms of the disease. Omega-3 fatty acids can help decrease inflammation that occurs from osteoarthritis as well as improve the locomotion of dogs who have the disease. Glucosamine and chondroitin can be added into the diet to help treat osteoarthritis caused by hip dysplasia. A glucosamine-based nutritional supplement may give the body additional raw materials used in joint repair. Glucosamine can take three to four weeks to start showing its effects, so the trial period for medication is usually at least three to five weeks. Canine massage may alleviate discomfort, decrease muscle soreness and spasms, and help move lymph and nutrients through the system.